Good evening and welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Tonight is Thursday, June 1st, 2017. Can I have the attendance, please? This is Bailey. Here. This is Lyford. Here. This is Massengill. This is Murphy. Here. Ms. Perry. Here. Mrs. Shea. Here. Ms. Starr. Here. Ms. Hobbs. Mr. Rashon. You please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Um, just before we get really started, does anyone want to move up closer to the front? <laughs> it's like a lot of empty seats in the front. If you're fine where you are, that's fine too, but just thought I would mention it in case you couldn't see this, all of the empty seats. Mike and Kate are the usual. I know, our only brave front, front row. And who so? So that takes us to uh, 4.0. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? We do. There are several um, additions to the agenda this evening. Under 10.1 appointments, um, there are three additions. 10.1.5, Eight Corner School Special Education Teacher. 10.1.6, Middle School Special Education Consulting Teacher. 10.1.7, High School Special Education Teacher. And then under 10.0, new business, there are a few additions. 10.3 is the first reading of policy IKF, which are the graduation requirements. 10.4 was a second reading of policy KJA slash JJIBC, um, which was relations with booster groups. We're going to remove this at the request of the policy committee um, from this agenda, and it will be revisited two weeks from now at our June 15th school board meeting. 10.5 is the elimination of policy <coughs> IKE, promotion, retention, and acceleration of students. 10.6 is elimination of policy IKFA, early graduation. 10.7 is elimination of policy IKFC, high school credits for middle school students. Um, and then we've added an executive session as agenda item 11.0 and moved adjournment to agenda item 12.0. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that takes us to 5.0 superintendent's report. Okay, I have several <coughs> things to report, um, not just because I knew we'd have a nice audience, it's just a lot going on in the district and we have many things to celebrate. So the first one is um, some excitement about our seniors. I was at the high school today and saw many of our seniors out front with their sidewalk chalk, um, replicating their school emblems for where they plan to go to college um, or where they're going after high school and that was a really exciting experience. Um, and then I was talking with our senior placement officer, uh, Robin Palmer, and I asked her to share some fun facts with me because this is an amazing class. Um, she said that they are a wonderful group of young men and women who are off to impact the world. And so here's some of the things that they're doing. We have students attending college in 21 states the District of Columbia and Canada. We have two students who will begin their college careers studying abroad, one in England and one in Australia. <coughs> we have uh, two students that I know of who are uh, going right into the armed forces out of high school. The class of 2017 has six set of twins and three of these sets, the twins will be attending the same college. That would be fun. Um, 23 students have confirmed that they'll be continuing um, their athletic career in college by participating in either D1, D2, or D3 programs. And we have students um, entering accelerated programs, which is combining their undergraduate and their graduate degrees in law, pharmacy, and business. And one more fun fact, 
our, um, our students are studying and exploring so many interests. Um, I was amazed to hear all that they are pursuing. So some engineering, computer sciences, health sciences, theater, visual arts, education, music, languages, creative writing, international relations, and many, many more. So um, we're, it's such an awesome time of the year with all the senior excitement, but we're super excited to, to see these young people heading out into the world. That's great. Share that with us. Um, also, we received our spring 2017 SCF grants. Um, SCF is the Scarborough Education Foundation who creates opportunities for our teachers to write innovation grants twice a year. And this cycle, they awarded the Scarborough School Department $17,560 in grant funds. Um, and, and that is really spread across five different grants. So one grant was written by Pat Reagan at Wentworth for the use of technology to support science learning. Another grant was written by Albert McCormick at the high school, um, and he's looking at developing an aquaponics program. Um, Mar Marlisa Dowling at Blue Point uh, is looking at dynamic seating for a first grade classroom to address multi-need student bodies. Um, multi-need student bodies. Um, Monique Culbertson is our Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, and she uh, wrote a large grant for Project Lead the Way, where um, teachers from Wentworth, the middle school, the high school, and K2 will have opportunities to receive some high-quality, cutting-edge professional development that will impact our programming in the fall. And Lisa Joyner from the high school uh, wrote a grant for STEM, Grow, and Feed. So we just want to give a shout out to SES and say thank you for supporting us and allowing us to think creatively and outside the box and the budget. Did you already say the total of yes. the dollar amount? It is $17,560. Thank you. And then <coughs> I always at this um, business meeting give us an enrollment update. So this month I'll just uh, speak to our grand totals. Last month we were at 2,986 students. This month we're at 2,984 students um, enrolled in the Scarborough Public Schools from K through 12. And then um, a couple of reminders. We have our senior walk coming up on June 8th. And this year we're excited because all of students K through 12 will be able to participate, obviously the seniors, but we're bringing over our K2 students. So that program or that event will start at 945 at the high school at the track area. And that is on June 8th. And then of course graduation is coming up at 7 o'clock on June 11th and that's held at the Cross Arena and of course you must have tickets to attend this but we're really excited about um, graduation. And um, our July school board meeting has been moved to July 13th and it'll be in Chambers B at 7 o'clock. One final update that I have, I'm actually going to go over to the podium so I can sure. work the um, slide back. This will be good because you guys will have some good information. You can sit down and speak to the meeting with you about the budget. <coughs> so recently, um, driving through Scarborough, oh, I should take a step back and remind us all why we're here. Um, anytime I get a chance to speak, I always like to remind folks that uh, of our mission. And um, I think it's especially important when we start thinking about the budget because it's really easy to get um, bogged down in the dollars and cents of the work that we do and that of course matters and makes all of our effective programming possible. But um, I want to remind us that we're really building our future. We're really helping our students do all of those amazing things that you, you heard our seniors are getting ready to embark on and we're going to hear from some more of our amazing students in just a bit. Um, so this is our mission. Our fundamental purpose is ensuring high levels of learning for each and every student. Therefore, we will do whatever it takes to bring all students to their full potential. And I don't think this is true just for the Scarborough Public School staff. I think this um, is the mission of our community, <coughs> or should be. So a little clarity for our community. You may have seen some signs like this around town. Um, and this, to me, when I first saw this, I felt like this is a little misleading. Because when I first saw this, I was like, wait a minute. 7.4% increase, that's not what the tax rate increase is going to be. Um, and even talking with other folks, I've been getting a lot of questions from people saying, is, is, is that what the real tax rate increase is? And the answer to that is no. That is not your tax rate increase. Um, the real anticipated tax rate increase for the entire municipal budget is 3.49%. Estimated. 
Estimated, yes. <laughs> um, and we do anticipate, I was just reading an update today from Maine School Management, and they were talking about some of the conversations that are happening at the Appropriations Committee around school funding. And good news, both parties are really committed to funding education at 55%. And so um, it's interesting to see some of the different ideas that are on the table for that. But important fact, the real anticipated estimated tax rate is 3.49%. Um, and then I'm just going to share three truths with you. Again, that anticipated tax rate comes from a 3.38% increase in our expenditures, so the amount of money it takes to run our schools um, from last year's budget. So that's a 3.38% <coughs> increase in spending from last year. But we also did receive a pretty significant loss in revenue this year. Um, and we've talked about this throughout the budget process. When you look at both the increase in expenditures and the decrease in revenue, that's where you get that 7.4% point, net increase. And so what that means is the total cost of the, of, of, it's the total proposal in our education budget. And this is talking about the increase from last year's budget to this year's proposed budget, which is what, you'll, what the community will be voting on on June 13th. So this, Second truth is that, yes, we are, in fact, using fund balance to offset our revenue loss. And I pulled this content from some previous slides that we've used throughout the budget process, so none of this is new information. Um, but we did, in FY16, use Wentworth project funds um, for the debt service payment. We had 2.2 million in unassigned, we have 2.2 million in unassigned fund balance. Um, and then this year, we're anticipating using 2.1 million of that non-tax revenue in the FY18 budget proposal. So we are, in fact, planning to use that fund balance to offset that loss in revenue that I showed you before. What we've also done, um, our leadership council has engaged in a, a curtailment of non-essential spending from um, the last few weeks of school so that we can try to generate as much fund balance as possible, um, kind of using the idea that if we haven't ordered it yet, you know, can we kind of hold off um, for the rest of this school year so that we can then, any unspent funds could be rolled into our fund balance and we could use it for our future needs, um, future budgets. And then the third truth is that, yes, yeah, please, everybody come out and vote. Um, I recently learned that last time we had a vote, last year when we voted, I think an estimate of about 4,000 community members came out to vote, which sounds like a lot of community members, except there's 20,000 people living in Scarborough. Um, and so, you know, I would be really excited to see more and more of our community members come out and vote. And I feel like my job as your superintendent is to ensure that you have the most accurate, up-to-date information. And so, um, in collaboration with our finance committees and with the town manager, we've been working really hard to kind of give you as much information as you might want and need, but then in the next, um, the last few weeks, we've tried to create what is the most relevant current information, because if you've been following this since February, there's been lots of numbers <laughs> shared um, to get us to where we are today. So right here in the Scarborough Public Schools, you see um, a web slider going across that talks about tax relief for our older citizens, but also what the actual um, proposal looks like and encouraging everybody to come out and vote. And if you're a person who likes a lot of information, right over here on the side, see how I'm clicking on the word budget? Um, if you're in the school page, then you see down here it says joint town and school budget page. Click there. Um, and this gets a little clicky, but it's just the route that I'm taking from the school page. Up top here, if you click on FY8 2018 budget, we've also put the same slides here so you can blow them up really big and look at them closely um, and you can stop them from clicking automatically <laughs> on you so you can spend more time. But then on the side here, we've pulled out some of the, um, some important documents that you may want to take a deeper dive into. And so again, I just wanted to encourage our community to make sure that you have clarity. If you have a question or you're unsure about information you're hearing or seeing, give me a call, shoot me an email. Um, I'd love to have a coffee and talk with you about it and just, just to ensure that you have the most accurate information. So that's my update. Okay, so 6.0, the chair's report. <coughs> um, I just want to take a minute to not, you have a special night tonight with some staff members. 
some at the beginning of their career relatively and some on the way out. But I want to thank all of our staff for um, hard work through the year. I know the end of the year can be rough. It's challenging and kids are already in, well, we haven't had that much sun, but it is going to turn into summer soon and kids lose focus and it can be hard to keep their attention, but it's amazing the stuff that happens right up to the very end of the school year and we just appreciate the work and we know um, that it takes them a little extra effort to get to the finish line and um, that it's not always um, coasting in quietly to the end, <laughs> end of the school year. So thank you, thank you for that and um, we are just really excited. This is one of the most fun meetings for us of the year that this is why we're here to do this kind of recognition. So it's a special night and I wanted to just mention why Lizzie's not here. We won't have a student rep um, representative report. She should know by now so I can tell you that um, Lizzie moved here as a sophomore and her parents or from Scarborough, but <coughs> she um, was a military kid until she got back here and her last posting, their last posting was Belgium and her parents flew her best friend here today. <laughs> for graduation, Isn't that, it makes me so happy for her. <laughs> so I'm like, no, she cannot come to a meeting tonight and get dragged away from her friend. <laughs> so Lizzie is having a big surprise right now. So she's not here, so we have no student representative report, but. And I talked to her earlier today and she really had no clue. No, she's she like, has I no, have she had no, no idea, idea what's going on. I just know I have to get in a car and go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, we are right on to 9.0 recognition. All right. So we have um, lots of recognition tonight, and we're going to start with our 2017 retirees. Um, each principal is going to come up and uh, speak a little bit to a little bit about the amazing people that are retiring from our district tonight, and then they'll introduce the next principal. And so on and so forth. Uh, so let's get started with Ann Lovejoy coming on up to the podium. And Ann will talk to us about our K2 retirees. Oh, that slide. Can you put the slide back up? Oh, sure. Can I, get it? I, I, I don't have a special slide. Do you have a special slide? Do you have <laughs> Kelly, Kelly has a special slide. <laughs> Should I just press? That's all right. It's just music, though. I know. You had it, Cal. I had it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I guess we'll have to keep scrolling now. So a lot of to do for two people who aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> we still think nice thoughts about them. I know. We're going to say very nice things about them. So um, the first person that I am going to speak briefly about is Mary Delolio. She was a Blue Point librarian um, for 20 years, and she um, has a special relationship with the assistant superintendent as well, the sister-in-law. <laughs> Uh, but she uh, knows every student in the school. She has worked so hard for 20 years at, in the library there to help students, help teachers, support learning, and she has grown with her technology skills and is, uh, just does everything that needs to be done around the building. Uh, they, they tell me, I, I haven't worked with her personally, but they tell me she knows every child and every bus route and every bus line and every child who's supposed to be in every bus line so that they make sure every kid gets home safely, which is always important at K2. And the librarian does a million and one things, including lots of duties and laminating and as well as reading and teaching research skills and all kinds of things that have come along. Library skills have changed so much, as you know, over the last few years. And 
she has kept up with it, and they are really going to miss her, I know. Um, so, Mary Delolio, congratulations. <laughs> the second one is Sue Hansen, and Sue Hansen has been the art teacher at K2 for 31 years. She's shared uh, her teaching responsibilities between Eight Corners and Blue Point. She does an amazing, amazing, amazing job with kids. She really gets the highest quality work out of them. I, I can't even do the things that she can get five-year-olds to do with mm -hmm. art. It's really, it's really stunning. People walk down the halls and they can't imagine that five, six, and seven-year-olds have done the work that is being um, displayed up on the, the bulletin boards there and that gets sent home at the end of the year. Um, and I know that that uh, the art teachers at Wentworth probably do know and appreciate the quality of her instruction because they receive the benefits of that when they come to third grade. And I see Beth Libby nodding and agreeing, yes. Um, and the good tradition just continues as you go, get up there. Um, so Sue Hansen, 31 years of teaching art, and uh, I, I can't even say enough about her talents as an artist herself with her fiber art and her photography and her watercolors. And every year she comes back to school showing me her new medium that she's mastering and taking classes in and excited about. So she is truly a lifelong learner and I know she will um, stay busy and keep learning and I wish her all the best. <laughs> and now Kelly Crosby will be talking about the retirees from Wentworth. So I wanted to begin with a quote from a book that I read earlier this year with my daughter. And the book is called Miss Bixby's Last Day by John David Anderson. Um, the quote is, she's the sort of teacher who makes you feel like school is worthwhile, who recognizes something in you that sometimes you don't even see in yourself, who you never want to disappoint. What Miss Bixby is, is one, a one-of-a-kind teacher. So it is my privilege to speak about this retiree, Wentworth's own one-of-a-kind teacher, Mrs. Beth Libby. Beth Libby started teaching art at Wentworth in 1981 and has stayed at this phase level for the span of her 36 years. 36 years with third, fourth, and fifth graders. <laughs> a lifelong learner herself, she earned her master's degree in 2010. She's been a member of the Wentworth School Leadership Team, representing her beloved Allied Arts Learning Community since 2004. She was an integral member of the Wentworth School Building Committee, and I think several previous building committees as well. <laughs> um, and she led the Interiors Subcommittee in designing our gorgeous school. Beth brings creativity. She brings passion and joy for teaching and learning to our school each day. She's quick with a laugh or to jump in and support a special project. She is perpetually upbeat and has been the champion for the arts in the Scarborough Public Schools. What stands out the very most about Beth is that she genuinely cares deeply for every single one of her students. And she does have that gift for finding each of their unique talents. Her students love her too. When a teacher enjoys teaching, the kids just know. The Wentworth School community will surely miss Beth, but wish her nothing but all the health and happiness in her retirement. Mrs. Libby because I was in her first kindergarten class in 1980 <laughs> and then I had it yeah so so she was my art teacher in kindergarten but all the way through middle school because back then we were smaller and so she was in all the schools so she's like it's not your fault I'm not an artist but you tried you tried so hard you tried so hard and I still think you did a good job thank you she still let me be on the interiors committee. So. Yeah, you did a good job. You okay. really did. Thank you. And I got to serve on all of those Wentworth building committees with her. Thank you. have to go down. Take it. You have to go down. <laughs> Thank 
And now, Barbara Hathorne, our middle school principal, will speak about the middle school retirees. So, we have two retirees who have worked in Scarborough schools for a total of 60 years. I'd first like to speak with, uh, about Leslie Walker. Leslie Walker is an amazing person. She has done so much for Scarborough schools. She started at Pleasant Hill. She worked for a year at the front office. She then worked for a year at the in, as um, the secretary at the, in the guidance department at the middle school and then earned her degree and worked as the computer tech skills teacher at the middle school for, we're thinking about 18 years. Uh, she did everything. The work that Leslie did is now done by three different people. <laughs> so these are some of the things that, um, that we're all proud of and some of the things that she's done. So she's done WSMS News for about 18 years and she has never missed a week once it got going. She started the computer club and has serviced so many students that absolutely <laughs> love anything with technology and they have done amazing things because of her guidance. She has seen many changes in technology. She managed the first online grade book for the middle school she was the go-to IT person. Now we have two people doing that job. Still is. People still go to her for help. She was there when uh, MLTI started. So she is the one that worked with the MacBooks, got them up and running every year, trained the teachers, trained the students. She currently trains teachers. <coughs> teachers go to her secretly. I can't do this, Leslie. <laughs> and she helps them and doesn't tell a soul. She um, she also, at one time, we had printers in almost every classroom. She took care of all of those. She is so dedicated to our students. Her focus is teaching students the basic skills of how to use a computer. A highlight of this year is, has nothing to do with technology. It was her knitting club that she <laughs> loved. And it was most all boys and one girl, right? They loved it. Um, she loves helping people troubleshooting problems. <coughs> she volunteers her time for so many things. Right now she's putting together the slideshow for the eighth grade celebration and she never says no to anyone asking for help. She's made a huge impact on Scarborough Middle School and the staff and students will truly miss her expertise and passion for her work. Leslie. Thank you, thank you. Maybe you could just come back at this meeting club. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. And I will speak about Mrs. Sue Beauvais. Mrs. Bovair has been at Scarborough Middle School for 40 years. She came, Woo! I know, it's amazing. <laughs> and she's amazing. She came right out of college. She is so dedicated to her students. She's built an unbelievably strong instrumental program that is recognized throughout Southern Maine. The band directors think very highly of her. Most of her students go on to play um, to play a musical instrument at the high school. They are passionate about their work, about their playing, because Mrs. Beauvais is passionate. During her time as band director, she every year takes students to District 1 Honor <coughs> Festival each year, and usually, Sue, you have students that place at a very, very high level. Um, she works with Gates Instrumental students. She has directed chorus for many years, and this is the biggest group she's had. I think it were amazing this year. She works as a team 
um, a 512 team to develop the instrumental program for the school system. She is a ca an advocate for all students, not just her band students, but for all students. Sometimes it's hard to find Sue sometimes. I go into her classroom, I cannot find her because the kids are all bigger than she is. <laughs> they know how to find her. Um, we figured out today, we were talking about how many students she, we think she has taught. This year, she is teaching 401 students. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And they all grow. It's unbelievable. So we think in her 40 years, she has taught around 15,000 students, wow. and including um, she's a proud teacher of John Campbell, who still comes to see her. She came, he came last year to pay a visit, and they, I think, are still fairly close, very famous. Um, so it will be very difficult for all of us to have uh, Sue not be with us. The students won't know what to do. I think Sue also said the sixth graders are saying, Mrs. Bobear, how do you feel? And uh, are, you, are you sad or happy? And Sue said both. She is happy to move on, but very sad um, to leave her students behind. So, Sue, you are a presence, a short one, but a big <laughs> presence. <laughs> I am not Mr. Creech. <laughs> really? He had some other commitments tonight. So yeah, I was asked that. and have the great pleasure of um, talking about Glenn Stankiewicz this evening. So one thing, Glenn has been with us for nine years, but I thought I would tell you a little bit about what Glenn did before he got to Scarborough Schools. Because he graduated from the University of Maine at Portland Gorham. He got his master's from Troy University in Alabama. He spent 20 years as an Air Force officer and retired as a lieutenant colonel in, from the Air Force. During his Air Force career, he was a special agent with the Air Force Office of Special Investigation. And I could tell you more about that, but then I'd have to silence you, so I'm going to spare us all. <laughs> he taught four years at the University of Massachusetts as a professor of aerospace studies. Really? And he taught nine years in the Portland school system before he came to Scarborough High. And for Scarborough High, he's been um, a world studies teacher with the freshmen, and he also established the first criminology course here at Scarborough. As a freshman teacher, Glenn built the academic and leadership skills in his freshman students. For example, every class period, one student is designated to start the class and run them through their warm-up activities while Glenn takes attendance and maybe passes out papers and things. I can't tell you observing that class how seriously students take that role of being the class leader. They, I think that it instills responsibility in them and leadership and um, he really makes his classes fun and upbeat but he has high expectations at the same time and he's just been a great teacher to our freshmen. One of the few good things about Glenn's leaving, I would like to report that the Health and Wellness Committee, along with Food Services, are going to have a more healthy statistics to report out next year because they won't be selling Glenn a morning 9 a.m. ice cream. <laughs> and, and so, Anna, I'm sorry I've outed him, but, but it is true, he often has a morning ice cream. And my secretary says that if you put the word breakfast in front of it, it's a breakfast food. So Glenn, I know you've been having your breakfast ice cream. <laughs> I mentioned the, cre the criminology class that he created, and he's, um, he's been running that class um, since he created it, and it's been a great elective, and it's been of great interest with students, and I think, in fact, 
Next year we'll be teaching three, that course three times, the semester course. Um, and this year we actually added a science course in forensics which will kind of match the criminology course. So we're either supporting job opportunities in this area of law enforcement or the other option to think is that we're teaching students how to work around the law. But I'm going to practice positive intentions here. <laughs> Another support to the building as a whole is that Glenn provides us as part of the course he teaches, he has professionals in the field come to talk to students about their jobs. Personally, our leadership team thinks this is a great thing. He has FBI agents, sheriffs, secret service agents, crime scene investigations, and the DEA. That's the drug enforcement agency for you non-criminal people. <laughs> um, he, he brings all these people in and he, he even has a police officer that specializes in polygraph examinations that meets with his class and teaches them about their jobs. So do you see what I mean about potentially giving them skills to get around the law? Good intentions, good intentions. However, on the opposite end of, end of things, we must confess that since we've offered criminology every single year, through this class, we do have a serious crime that occurs within the walls of SHS and, and, and a crime scene that goes with it. And this crime must be solved every year. But I would like to reinforce that there has never really been any real bloodshed <laughs> at these crime scenes. <laughs> One thing I personally will miss hearing every day in my beloved walkie-talkie is Glenn's famous the perimeter is secure. <laughs> and we get that announcement every day after Glenn has done his circuit um, as hall duty. Now I ask you, with this special agent background he has, how could we not make him a hallway monitor? I tell you, we've been safer for all of this. <laughs> and he volunteers for that job every single year. But seriously, great, Glenn has been a great team player at Scarborough High. I remember him telling me his very first year that he set a goal to go visit, no matter how big the building was, he went to visit every single member of his department around the building to at least say hello and ask how they were doing every single week. He is a team player. He's steadfast and true. He um, offers to help any time you need something done. If you need it in a wink, you turn to Glenn because it will certainly, he will help make that happen. He's been a positive professional and a great co colleague. He is irreplaceable, and we will miss him very much. But he does promise me that he's going to be a sub. So I, I'm <laughs> holding on to that. So congratulations, Glenn. I'm next. Next up, Allison Marchese, our Director of Special Services. So I'll apologize ahead of time that I'm probably going to get choked up. It's just how I roll. We have uh, 129 years of service of six special ed staff that are retiring this year. So there is, it's a, it's a huge body of commitment to Scarborough. And I've been blessed to work over 30 years with some of these people. So that being said, we have three people who aren't here tonight, so I will speak to them first. Uh, one is Kathy Dillon McHugh. She's worked for us 12 years as an Ed Tech 3. She started in the high school library, then she went to the middle school functional life skills room, the middle school resource room, and she, she is finishing now in our high school academic life skills program. She uh, has a BA in English. She has a master's degree in library science. She's also certified as a K-12 media specialist. Um, Kathy actually worked as a reference librarian in Scarborough, Gorham, 
Old Orchard, Sacos, and many of our surrounding communities before she came uh, to, to work in our school system. Uh, Kathy is seen as very dependable, reliable, but most importantly cares about the individual programming needs of her students. We very much thank her for her commitment to our students and family in Scarborough. The next um, ed tech that I want to speak about is Pat Campbell. She has worked 16 years for us uh, as an ed tech K through 12. I believe she started as a long-term sub in the middle school social life skills program. Then she went to the Wentworth, life, uh, Wentworth Functional Life Skills Program. She did a half day at Eight Corners for a little bit helping us out. She went to the high school resource room and she is finishing her career in our high school functional life skills program. Pat has a Bachelor of Arts in Art History. She has a master's degree, a degree in Fine Arts Textile, a second master's degree in Fine Arts Fiber. She has taught art classes at Waynefleet Haystack, the main college of art. Uh, her artwork has been selected for multiple individual and group exhibitions. Pat is incredibly diligent with her student responsibilities no matter where she has worked K through 12. She is particularly attentive to the multiple needs of our functional life skills students. Um, Pat's already said that she's going to come back and sub with us mm -hmm. after she gets a little travel out of, her, out, out of the way and she'll continue to be passionate about her artwork as well. So looking forward to having her back. Uh, Deb Toms is also an ed tech uh, with us for the last 25 years, but she stayed in one location. She has always worked at the Wentworth School at the Social Life Skills Program. Uh, Deb has an associate degree in early education and an elementary education certificate from BU. Prior to coming to Scarborough 25 years ago, she worked in New Hampshire as a long-term sub. Deb has been part of the Social Life, the Social Life Classroom team for over 20 years. She has worked with a wide range of student needs from the autism spectrum to reactive attachment disorders. There's been some tears shed over the years, but so much joy, laughter, and successes amongst the team. She has great compassion and works hard to make a special connection with each and every student uh, she works with. She found great joy and actually went and even uh, took additional math coursework herself to uh, work with students and convince them that they could learn math, and they did. She has a no-nonsense approach that is rich with humor, support, and high expectations for the kiddos she worked with. She will be especially missed, I'm sure, by uh, Kelly and John for her lunch and recess duties. Uh, she must have covered thousands of duties over the last 25 years, as well as she has been the go-to tech person for all the classroom needs. So we know there are many countless ways that Deb will be missed, and we certainly wish her the best, and I hear we can count on her to sub for us next year as well. Mm -hmm. So three um, fantastic ed techs that we're losing but have given so much to our community. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Mike Bogart. Mike was um, originally hired for a three-month position. <laughs> it is now 18 years later. <laughs> uh, he has worked um, as a half-time teacher in our middle school social life skills program. Uh, when Mike joined the program, it was called STRIVE. Students take responsibility in virtually everything which is very uh, dear to my heart because I was one of the co-mothers of the program. Uh, so Mike um, came with us with a BA in physical education, a master's degree in special education, a master's degree in educational leadership. He served in the Navy and he's a retired firefighter from Massachusetts. Wow. Uh, fun fact, uh, Mike is also a published author. Ooh. He has written uh, three novels at a leveled reading, high interest level for young teens with a sports emphasis. So we hope to see more works. Uh, Mike has also been a Scarborough coach at the middle school and high school level. I believe he coached JV football. Uh, he's now coaching high school softball. He coached at the middle school for uh, baseball and basketball. Uh, so 18 years with us as a part-time position in our social life skills program. Mike is known for his quiet presence, his smile on his face, a calmness within chaos at times, a willingness to really listen, and a sense of humor. Mike has a joy for teaching across any setting. He's unselfish with his time and his care. He's seen uh, by all at the middle school as a gifted teacher, 
a mentor, and a friend. For the last 15 years, I've been trying to convince Mike to work with us full time. And now I really have to accept the fact that he's not going to. <laughs> he has left a meaningful impression on many lives, students, families, colleagues, athletes, and community. He'll always have a place in our hearts. Mike Bogart. in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the next person I'd like to recognize is Diana Day. She has uh, worked with us for 19 years at the middle school. Uh, Diana has a BA in history, a master's uh, degree in education with moderate special needs. She also has a certificate of graduate study in the assistant principal program and she has completed her principal, school principal coursework and certification. Uh, while living in Massachusetts before Diana moved to Maine, she was an ESL teacher. She was a high school English and history teacher in a community-based treatment program, a middle school, uh, and also a middle school special education teacher. When her family moved to Maine, she uh, worked as a special education and day treatment center before joining us in 1998 as a teacher in our middle school uh, social life skills program. She and Mike worked alongside each other for a couple of years. She has been the consulting teacher at the middle school uh, for the last 15 years. The consulting teacher role is quite varied in managing the day-to-day -day programming and staffing needs of the special education department. Um, Dave Curry was just saying that he and Diana have a date every morning at 7.30 to manage where the subs need to be and make sure everybody is covered. Um, of uh, those significance is the administration responsibility in chairing IEP meetings. The knowledge of regulations, resources, assessments, and programming is critical. Diana is very conscientious with her job responsibilities, creating a supportive team that is always growing and learning, being uh, an equal member of the school building sh buildingship leadership team, as well as the district special education te uh, team. Staff appreciate uh, Diana's daily check-ins, her open door policy for any concerns, and her support and commitment, commitment to the school <coughs> store as the proceeds provide the little extras for the special education students and programs. As a member of my leadership team, I appreciate Diana. I have learned from her. She tries hard every day. She continually works hard to improve her skills and knowledge. We wish Diana much happiness as she travels a bit with her husband, enjoys her grandbabies, and I'm sure continues to find many volunteer opportunities. Diana Day. And finally, Ann Kurlansky. Ann Kurlansky has been a special education teacher at our high school for 39 years. Um, she has a, a bachelor's degree in education, a master's uh, degree in education with a concentration in special education, and significant postgraduate coursework in literacy. Prior to coming to Scarborough, Ann taught four years in the junior high, senior high um, uh, schools in the Portland area, uh, giving her teaching career of 43 years, significant. Uh, I think she came here single, but met a man, got married, turned into Mrs. Kralansky, raised her family, and is now going to be continuing to um, raise her grandbabies, support her, her grandchild coming. When Anne came to the high school, 
uh, names have changed a lot. The original special education classroom was called the Community Living Room. Uh, she also worked in our adult ed program with students that had left her, but she wanted to support them in their transition out into the community. Uh, she worked in the high school resource room, and then I finally convinced her to go over into the social life skills program. Uh, I will say Anne's probably been, um, had a classroom in all corners of the high school, including a portable in the back parking lot. <laughs> Uh, Anne is always focused in on the whole student and their family, preparing them, them from the world after high school, not just in academics, but also in the life skills, resume writing, interview skills, opening a bank account, learning about bus transportation, setting a budget, grocery shopping, vocational training, uh, connecting with community resources. As one of her colleagues said, Anne just does all the little things that sometimes go unnoticed providing the kids with food, clothes, toiletries, prom dresses, the list goes on and on. Anne is that special teacher. Anne has dedicated her time, her love, and her pocketbook to the classroom. She is continually seeking out resources that will engage her students in their interest and ability level, and most recently talked about a trip to Books A Million to find that special book that would engage a student. I know this has been a very difficult decision for Anne to make, as there's always a student that she wants to get through to graduation and settled into their post-secondary plans. Anne will continue to work for us in the summer as she loves tutoring the younger students. And um, I know she has also agreed to sub with us, but just won't be able to enter the high school. So um, it's, I'll miss you, Anne. Thank you very much. We have one more retiree, but um, we have asked her to come to our June 15th school board meeting so we can honor her in person. Um, Ann Cass is an assistant principal in our K-2 schools at Blue Point in Pleasant Hill, um, but I spoke with her today and she is going to be able to come on the 15th, so we are waiting to honor her in person, um, along with Lizzie Hobbs, who's our school board rep. And <coughs> Um, so next on the agenda, or actually before we go on, we do have one more recognition. Um, we have some students from our academic decathlon team here, if they could please come up to the podium. Um, we've been eagerly awaiting their attendance at a school board meeting. So we have been eagerly awaiting their attendance at a school board meeting so we could honor them um, for their third place honors in Division II national finals that took place in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, the members of the team, the coaches are Shane Davis and Jonathan York, um, and the members of the team, the complete team is Samuel Curtis, David Fluelling, Eric Huber, Evan Kane, Kate Kenny, Allison Lafferty, Raja Muthyam, Thomas Fashan, and Ian Youth. And so we have a few members here today that are going to tell us a little bit about their experience um, and, and share with us how it feels to have this sweet success. 
Um, so my name is Kate Kenny. Um, it was a lot of fun. We got to go down to Madison, which was quite an experience between all the flights and stuff and arriving the same day as the competition. So we went straight from flight to um, giving our speech and interview that day. Yeah. So speech and interview that day. Um, the next day we did our testing and the day after was the banquet. So it was quite a three day run of a lot of work. Um, but it was a lot of fun. We did, I would say we learned a lot about teamwork with one another and we got to meet kids from all over um, the country, um, as well as there were quite a few international teams. So we got to meet a lot of people that otherwise I don't think any of us would have met before. So it was quite an experience. We got to learn a lot, both from each other and from other kids who wanted to do the same thing we did. Um, and we want to thank you guys all for supporting us and helping us get there. There was a lot of fundraising as well as a lot of help and cheering us on. So we really appreciate it. So thank you. Kate, can, well, can, can one of you tell us how you finished? We know, but can you just share uh, your, your stats? All right. Um, well, we finished third place in the uh, in Division Two, uh, so the medium school division, um, and so we were very happy with that finish. Uh, I don't think any of us were really expecting, um, That's amazing. but it exceeded our expectations. That's great. Okay. Come up to the microphone. <laughs> and just to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Evan Kane. And I'm Allison Lafferty. So, yeah. What grade are you guys in? I'm in 11, so a junior. Um, I'm a sophomore. <coughs> Congratulations. 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 We're so proud of you. It's amazing to think about all of that travel that you did and then jumping right, right to work when, you got, when your feet hit the ground. So that's really impressive and you should be very proud of your hard work and preparation. <coughs> okay, so now we're going to go to um, new business 10.0, but if there are people here, I know the students are happy to go probably at this point, but if anyone else would like to leave, we're not offended, <laughs> but we, we do have a, a full agenda left. But And we will be honoring our first year continuing professionals. Right. So you newbies have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that takes us to 10.1 appointments, 10.1.1 high school coaching positions. Move approval is printed. Okay. Second. You want to list them there? Sure. Um, so staff and community members have been recommend have been nominated to fill four high school coaching positions. Um, those staff are Lance Johnson as the weight room coach, John Bastian as the weight room coach, Jacob Brown as our varsity boys ice hockey coach and um, Katrina Wade as our varsity cheering coach. The recommendation is to appoint the high school coaches as presented. Great, thank you to everyone for um, applying for and supporting our teams. It's an important part of our community and it's important for the kids to have experience outside the classroom. So and we're really happy when it can be staff members that are coaches, so thank you everyone. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. This is six. And then 10.1.2, second year probationary professionals. 25 professional staff have successfully completed their first year at Scarborough Schools and will be moving on to a second year pro probationary status. The recommendation is to move the professional staff forward to a second year probationary, probationary status as presented. Move approval. Second. Okay. Did you want to read the name them? Okay. You want me to read all of the names? It's fast. All right, Joanne Sizemore is going to read all of the names for us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing the continuing contract one. Oh, maybe you will. See how you do that too? I'm just worried I, I will mispronounce someone's name and oh, I'll uh, still get it. 
bored. You don't know me very well. I lost you know. that job at the middle school for the eighth grade graduation. Okay, Lori I, Alvis, Matthew Anderson, <laughs> Christine Beecher, uh, Darlene, Darlene Boissonneau, uh, Jane Bullis, Anna Kosma, Stephanie Davis, Sandra Dumont, Ryan Facey, Jar uh, Glenn Farron, Tobin Haglin, Fern. Emily Hodge. Hodgkins, Hopkins, 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 Hopkins yeah. Brandon Johnson, Maura LaFon, Lindsay McDonald, Laura McKenzie, James Marshall, Danielle Martell, Allison Musa, Martha, Martha, <laughs> Courtney Norrod, Amy Robinson, Michelle Shoup, Patrick Volker, Brooke Walston, and Aaron Wayne. Move Wayne. approval. Yeah. Did we did this. Is, are yeah. any of them here? No. I just wanna no. Wave. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? Pronunciation corrections? <laughs> All in favor? Six, thank you. 10.1.3, third year probationary professionals. So 18 professional staff have successfully completed their second year at Scarborough Schools and will be moving on to a third year probationary status. Um, the recommendation is to move the professional staff forward to a third year probationary status as presented and um, perhaps Kelly could read the names this time. To give Joanna a practice practice on the third one. We have a second. Second. Okay. So we have Sarah Essern, Carrie Ellen Avery, Carrie Becker, Aaron Card, William Cabana, Sarah Coniaris, Elizabeth Fahan, Aaron Hoos, Erica Key, Melissa Maddock, Albert McCormick, Gail Neal, Mary Beth Nolt, Amy Ranko, Ann Reiner, Richard Sellinger, Diane Stultz, and Richard Wesley. Are there any of them here? Any any of those here? No. Okay. All in favor? That's six. Thank you. Ten point one point four, first year continuing contract professionals. So this is an exciting time for our first year continuing contra contract professionals and we have invited them to attend tonight and many of them are here. 20 professional staff have successfully completed their third year at Scarborough Schools and will be moving on to a continuing contract. Recommendation is to move the professional staff forward to a continuing contract as, pre as presented. Um, following are the staff who will be moving on. Congratulations. And I'm going to ask Joanne Sizemore to please call their names and ask you to stand as you're recognized. Okay, Nancy Bannon, Steve Bizup, Jacob Brown, Christine DeRosa, Katrina Edwards, Sarah Giuliano, Christopher Haywood, no, Amory Henderson, Ashley Cadlick, Brianna Kelman, Gail Labonte, Michelle McPherson, Justo Perez Estevez, uh, uh, Petraea Plummer, Petraea Plummer <laughs> Rachel Powers, <laughs> Kelly Tukey, Karen Walker, Jessica Winchester, uh, Jennifer Wood, and Shaylee Zuncheck. Congratulations. I was just going to say it's a big night for Jacob Brown. I know. <laughs> Coming night. in strong. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Move approval is presented. Okay. Did we do that? Any other questions or comments or anything? Okay. All in favor? Congratulations. Thanks for sticking you around. <laughs> Um, 10.1.5, Eight Corner School Special Education Teacher. So as you see the special education retirements tonight, we have some new staff coming in um, and, and our leadership has been busy uh, at work posting those positions and really screening the applicants and interviewing so we could get the best possible staff in place for next year. Nancy Carroll has been nominated to fill the position created by a resignation. Ms. Carroll received both her bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Southern Maine. She has, a special, she has been a special education teacher in Cape Elizabeth School since 2002. Ms. Carroll will be placed on step eight of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Nancy Carroll as the eight corner school special education teacher. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Six. Thank you. 10.1.6, middle school special education consulting teacher. 
James Temple has been selected to fill this position created by retirement. Mr. Temple earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in History from the University of Southern Maine, as well as his Master's degree of Science, his, as well as his Master of Science degree in Abilities and Disabilities Studies. He has been a special education teacher with Spurwink Services for eight years. He has been an education director at Glickman Academy in Portland for six years. And most recently, he's been a senior director of education with Spurwink Services since 2014. Mr. Temple will be placed on step 18 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint James Temple as the middle school special education consulting teacher. So move. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Six, thank you. 10.1.7, high school special education teacher. So Zachary Barrett is here tonight. Um, thank you for coming. He has been nominated to fill this position created by a retirement. Mr. Barrett received his Bachelor of Science degree from Ithaca <coughs> College and currently has 21 credits of graduate work completed in special education. He has been a special education teacher at Spurring Services and currently is a special education teacher at Massabesic High School. Mr. Barrett will be placed on step nine of Bachelor's Plus 15 scale per the collective bargaining agreement and he's also a lacrosse coach with us. The recommendation is to appoint the Zachary Barrett as the high school special education teacher. Second. You need, you need to have a motion first. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? Great, all in favor? Congratulations. 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 Uh, 10.2, superintendent authorization of summer hires. I would like to request permission to authorize summer hires between school board meetings um, as we prepare for 2017-18. Do you have an idea yet how many positions? Uh, Just out of curiosity, if you have like a list already running. We have a running list. Yeah. I don't know the exact number Many. off the top of my head. <laughs> this is a big retirement <laughs> class, Many. that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. 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 Approval. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? Or? Okay, all in favor? Six. Go forth and hire. Thank you. 10.3, first reading of policy IKF, graduation requirements. Donna, you want to give us a little spiel? So um, we've been meeting um, several times now with uh, leadership at the high school to be able to um, put into place at least the beginnings of what would look like a graduation requirement under proficiency-based education. So uh, at this point, we're bringing forward to you tonight the first reading, um, and we feel confident that by the second reading we'll have some new information coming down from the state, particularly in the area of special education, that will allow us to add a little bit more information to the graduation requirement. But we, uh, the, the policy committee did take a look at um, policies that have been adopted in several towns around us and we did uh, get in contact with MSMA in order to uh, have some input from them as to what kinds of policies districts are, are trying to put into place regarding this graduation and we felt strongly that our parents, particularly the eighth grade parents, deserved at least a little bit of information as best we could put together um, so that their kids entering freshman year would have an idea about how things are going to move along for them. Um, there will be changes coming no doubt in this policy and we'll add some things for second reading, but um, policy certainly recommends that the board adopt this at this point in time. And do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, and I will just say now that I didn't say it out loud and I realized that, but I committee reports I was waiting until we got a little further down so that we could clear the room a little bit and let people go because I knew it was going to be a long meeting. So we will circle back and okay. do committee reports, but um, I just wanted to point that out, that I didn't forget it. I just we didn't waiting. say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was doing, but now you all do. Um, any questions or comments about this? I know um, we spent a, we've spent a long time on it. High school administration and their proficiency team have spent an enormous amount of time on it, and there's still a lot of unanswered questions, and it's nobody's fault except the state. So we've put together, I think, a policy that does answer some questions for incoming eighth grade families that they can 
start to get a feel for what it's going to look like as they're there, but there will be changes and we know that, but we thought it was better to throw something out there, even if there are changes later on, to at least have something to go on as we get started. Jackie? I'm still concerned and have, this is not so anything new for me, about the, the uh, world languages and, and the uh, visual and performing arts requirements for all students. Uh, you know, you, we've all known many students who cannot get their tongues around a language. And we've all known students who would have difficulty uh, in the arts. And until we come up with something as a substitute, for example, I know that, that there has been discussion about uh, computer skills and technology replacing world languages for some students. And that, that uh, the visual and performing arts can be, requirement can be satisfied in, in some way other than what is written now currently understood as that. So, the, yeah, the difference with this policy and going forward is proficiency based, it's an experience. So it's a foreign language experience every year they're enrolled. Am I correct in saying that? Well, what, we're, what Jackie's referring to is the class of 2025 and all graduation classes thereafter oh, where we are expecting that they demonstrate proficiency. Yeah. But I think what's important to know is that um, when we talk about world languages, you know, we're exploring a lot of different options like American Sign Language in addition to spoken languages. Mm -hmm. um, we also, when it comes to visual and performing arts, of course, digital media and things like that get pulled into it. Mm -hmm. So it's not... Um, it's not just the, the traditional kind of visual and performing arts that you may remember or have experienced. And it's already starting um, at, at our professional learning team day last Friday. I was talking with some of our, Wentworth, or our elementary music teachers and they're already creating different types of experiences for students to engage in music and have an appreciation for music that um, doesn't necessarily require them to be standing on a stage and have a big culminating performance, but teaching like an internal love and appreciation for music. So, um, but we're not saying that. We're we're talking about proficiency. So that I'm very concerned about our students who are not college bound hmm. and how they are going to be able to satisfy the requirements that we're telling them they must perform in order to graduate from our high school. And I think not only at our level, but at the state level, we have got to be, we have got to start looking for ways to support those students because just because they're not going to college doesn't mean they're not able to be proficient in something, number one, sure. and number two, Somebody who is going to be a good mechanic or a, a good carpenter is probably going to make more money than you and I will ever make as teachers. So they don't, they need to, to know mathematics and they need to know language and they, uh, English and they need to be able to write and communicate. But to have an expectation for them to do all of these things I think is is unreasonable. Well, the good news is we have a few years to work out the kinks, right. and um, I believe that we have a skilled staff that will be able to think of multiple pathways for students to reach proficiency, and um, that's what we're committed to do. That's what pro a proficiency-based education is all about, is that we have these clear requirements, but then it's our job as the educators to create a variety of ways for students to demonstrate their learning um, and produce evidence that proves that they've mastered those standards. So I feel 100% confident that we will um, be able to meet every student right where they are um, and help them grow towards proficiency. And, and I believe that that is our goal. And I mean our goal. But I can tell you whether I sit on this board or not, I am going to, as long as I can speak, I am going to fight for those students who may not be able to do some of these things and yet are very capable of graduating high school. No doubt. 
Yeah, and, and just to chime in, I think um, a lot of work is being done around the state as well as um, through MSMA that, you know, is engaging conversations about this through the Education Department, DOE, um, to have discussions around, well, how is this going to happen? Um, for example, underneath the, the special ed uh, considerations, it, it's, you know, how do, how do we discuss proficiency for kids who have IEPs? And so, you know, the discussions are underway and I think eventually we, we will come to some resolution about these kinds of things because let's face it, we want, we want our kids to graduate from high school. We want them to all graduate and be able to be prepared for whatever the next step is. But we're being asked to support a policy tonight mm -hmm. that is going to be a public document that parents and students are going to look at. And I am fearful, excuse me, that we will have some students who will say, I can't do that, and just give up, quite frankly. So. I think we need to be very careful and we need to shepherd them through this and keep a, a clever and sharp eye so that we don't lose them. Jody? Yeah. Um, so <coughs> we've all talked about it quite a bit, but each year, starting with the class of 2021, they have four um, standards or four subjects that they have to be mm -hmm. proficient, in, proficient in. Then in for the class of 2022, it adds, it says one additional content area of the student's choice. And then each year progressively gets more. Then there's two additional content areas and then three additional. But then when you get to the class of 2025, it defines it for you. Mm -hmm. So are those ones before that where it's at least two additional content areas of the student's choice, do they have to be one of those four additional things that we see? Do they have to be in health and education, visual arts, world language, and career and education? So it's one of those four things, or two of those four things, or three of those four things that they have to decide to choose from. Throughout the years leading up to it, yeah. These are, these are basically, by the time you get to 2025, we're saying that every content area gotcha. has to be based on, students have to demonstrate proficiency in, Okay, is what it's saying. Perfect. And, and the types of course offerings and the way that we um, scaffold instruction and the types of pathways that we create for students to reach those standards is the curriculum work that is ongoing and will be for from now until forever, I'm pretty sure. And just to remind ourselves, the class of 2025 are in fourth grade right now. So I see, I know what your concerns are and I share them that it's very disorganized in the state level that they require this is the standard going forward with very little guidance and framework and that's been challenging for everyone in every district. There aren't even um, sample policies really in other districts to go on because it's very, uh, it's very um, districts can choose a lot of the things, um, decide how proficiency will be shown, decide what is proficient. So these things are all um, ongoing conversations and that's why when we were talking about in the policy meeting to bring it forward, these kids are going to, the first kids are going to be in high school in the fall, and we thought it was unfair to have them come without some basic information um, available to them of what's going to be required for them as they proceed through high school. But by the time we would get to the class of 2025 and the foreign language and performing arts and where all those are required as proficiencies, I'm confident we're going to have a solid handle on this, and I think we probably will by the end of this year. Um, but it's just because they're coming in, we, we need to have some framework and that's why we decided to bring it forward right now. I don't, I can't think off the top of my head of another policy that we have supported that says the what and not the how. Well, I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily true with policies. The policy is we're laying it down and the administrators decide the how. So that's not in a policy. Um, I think that the how has been decided, there's been a lot of the how decided and we've had the workshop about proficiency based education and that yes, we those have. conversations have been going on for a decade. So I think the how is underway, it's just these last details because we don't know from the state level what the special education proficiencies are going to look like. And so 
that is a reality. We don't know. We don't know. We don't want an attendance diploma. That's garbage. So we're trying to. <laughs> We're trying to frame it the right way, but we wanted to have the policy as we have it on the books. And it aligns with the law. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, what I would want our community to know from this discussion is that um, this is really good work. We're moving in the right direction. The why behind this work is not because the state of Maine said so. The why behind this work is because I believe that we have an obligation to ask ourselves two questions about every student in every course every day and that is what do they know and what are they ready to learn and to me that's the essence of proficiency based education is that we are now rather than um, saying focusing solely on earning credit and solely on percentage grades we're saying like what is the actual evidence of your learning and we're allowing for students to demonstrate that in a whole variety of ways so that if you are that more tactile hands-on learner you can choose a pathway that allows you um, to tap into your best learning styles and, and access your education in a way that um, you feel most skilled to do. Uh, if you're a more academic, um, more precise learner and you know the traditional kind of textbook and lecture sort of style works for you there will be choices for that and everything in between so um, it's a lot of change and so you've heard us talking a lot about the amount of professional development that this takes for us to um, really shift our practices and shift our mindset um, and a big part of the work if you, at our PLT day again you saw many teachers studying not just about assessment and curriculum but they are choosing to study about growth mindset and how do you develop um, a mindset that emphasizes uh, or how do we develop language that emphasizes effort and help students believe that you truly can do anything if you put forward the effort and you're tracking your progress to tell yourself what you do well and what you're ready to do next and so that's really the mantra and so I I believe that every single student can be successful in a proficiency based system and I think that it actually allows us to individualize and personalize instruction in a way that isn't necessarily happening in our current traditional system so it's a big change and there is a lot of work to do I'm not going to underestimate that but um, this policy that you see before you is kind of a bare bones policy to be honest with you um, Kelly took out about seven pages of uh, additional language that we know we're going to want to add or tweak in the future but we wanted to be able to um, have a policy that addresses what the law requires us to do which is the staggered implementation over the next four years so that parents can see the course that we're on but I believe um, that our teachers will be ready for full implementation well before 2025 and then from that so within the next two to three years we'll be really be refining and um, mm -hmm. enhancing our skills and and really the language that we use because this this whole idea is that it's about feedback and so it's not as much about grades it's more about how do we assess learning and then how do we give students constructive feedback so they know exactly where they stand in position to that target the standard I have confidence in the superintendent and her leadership and our teachers, but this, I'm very leery about putting it in writing at the present time. Understandable. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay. All in favor of, make sure I'm in the right policy right now. <laughs> uh, first, for the first reading, um, approval of IKF graduation requirements all in favor okay six all right so then 10.4 we are moving to next meeting on the 15th 10.5 elimination of policy IKE promotion retention and acceleration of students so uh, these next three policies that you will have before you are all as a result of our taking a look at the proficiency based uh, graduation requirements and pretty much everything that we have in these next three policies are going to be accomplished through our regular graduation policy. So basically, we are, we are recommending that we eliminate these three policies. So uh, that would be the case with uh, IKE. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Any questions or comments about this? Okay, all in favor of eliminating IKE? 
six. Thank you. And then 10.6, elimination of policy IKFA early graduation. The same thing is true. Um, once you receive proficiency and you are able to meet the requirements of graduation, then you will be able to graduate. And that could mean you were, you know, traditionally a junior able to graduate just as we already have it now. Mm -hmm. So we're recommending the removal of this early graduation because it will be all be included within the graduation policy. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments about this one? All in favor of eliminating? Six. Thank you. 10.7, elimination of policy IKFC, high school credits for middle school students. And the same applies to this. Yep. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, questions or comments about this one? All in favor? Six. Thank you. So now we'll circle back to 7.0 committee report. Um, finance? I don't really have a lot to say. <laughs> Shockingly, yes. I, I would just encourage people to um, get out and support this school budget on June 13th. Um, it's been a pleasure working with the Finance Committee of the Town Council and here on the board. It's, I've said it over and over and over again, so I don't have to keep saying it, but um, I think this is a strong budget and, and I think it moves our schools forward um, in a reasonable way, but it does um, some important work that we need to have happen. Okay, vote. Vote. Everybody vote. All the people. <laughs> um, policy? So um, the policy met, obviously, to review what would be the new policy graduation requirements, and we talked about that as defined through proficiency. Uh, we also met with Mr. Legage regarding the boosters, and we'll be bringing that forward to you at our next uh, school board meeting. And we also had a lot of discussion about what the implications might be for eligibility for sports based on proficiency-based education. So th this will be a really significant part of how we develop what will happen in that area. And again, around the state, people are having the same kind of discussions everywhere. Um, but we'll bring that to you as soon as we're able to. Um, today I spoke at length with uh, Charlotte Bates at MSMA regarding several different things, but this was one of the topics. And there's so many implications both for uh, NCAA, but also from the main principals association that will have to be considered. And, you know, hopefully those groups will be all coming in, in line with, you know, and an understanding of how this is going to work around the state. And we'll learn more as it comes along. Uh, Charlotte and I also talked about policy and, and the ways in which we might be able to um, clean up our, our policy book because the uh, policy committee has been very concerned about uh, a number of different policies that are in there and she talked to me about several different opportunities that she would be willing to offer to us and she's the policy person at MSMA and um, she works with districts on a variety of tasks. So. Uh, the policy committee and we'll be discussing at our next meeting the uh, possibility of uh, engaging um, Charlotte with some of that work. I'd love to see that happen this summer mm -hmm. because she said, you know, once you have it all cleaned up, it's so much easier to move forward. Then you can just address the issues, the, the policies that are coming down that have to be changed. And given that I've been on policy now a few years and I've, I know that this is an issue, and I would love to see that happen, so hopefully we'll talk about that and see what we can do with her, and I'd like to do that this summer. I'm willing to put in hours on end myself in order to get this cleaned up. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, the last thing I do want to mention to you that is that <coughs> on May 12th, I attended USM's 50th anniversary of the Educational Leadership Program around the state. And at that meeting, um, it was a program that was offered to provide educators with uh, this particular program, Ed Leadership, um, was, uh, has been offered for several years, obviously 50, for additional <laughs> certification for people to, to get advanced credit. That is advanced studies in educational leadership, and that allows people to become administrators in our state. 
So our own Joanne Sizemore here, along with Jody Capaluti, organized this event at the Gateway. And I have to tell you, it was a really great night. And a lot of credit goes to Joanne for this, I, I, I have to say. She was well recognized at this uh, event by everyone. The speakers were uh, USM President Glenn Cummings, along with this year's USM graduation speaker, David Brancaccio, um, and they did a great job recognizing all the work that's being done at USM. But I, I really felt like I wanted to tell you about this event because it was a great recognition and it was a great job by Joanne. And you know, we don't value so much, you know, you see somebody every day working, 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 and sometimes we forget to say, good job, you know. And Joanne here is not just recognized in our own community, by our students, by our parents for so many years, and and also she's clearly recognized by the greater community of educators through the university, both uh, as a professor out there um, teaching one or two courses. One course, organizational, organizational behavior. Organizational behavior. <laughs> and um, she also serves uh, in a, another position over there in an advisory capacity on the Educational Leadership Advisory Board. So kudos. Thank you very much for all your work. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. That was very nice. It was a nice event. It was the first time, well, first time in 50 years yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, that it was done. And um, we're very pleased at the way it turned out because we were very nervous putting on an event like that at a big place. But it, it worked out. I don't know so. where you got the time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to thank you, Donna, for giving Joanne all those accolades so now she can never retire. <laughs> we discussed it yesterday. No. Oh, it's going to be one big celebration. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so communications. Uh, communications um, is meeting again tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and we've been largely working on our um, June newsletter. You can expect it out over the weekend at some point, so... Be ready for that. Um, and as well, you can expect, it's largely focused on the budget, new investments in the budget, um, the process, um, voting. <laughs> um, and on Facebook, we've been working on kind of counting down the days, trying to highlight school by school, department by department, um, what people are voting for. We want people not just to vote, but to know what they're voting for, what they're saying yes to. Um, and also, like Julie did earlier, trying to kind of dispel some of the myths that are <laughs> floating around out there. So, um, and uh, also we've been working, um, trying to work a little bit with Larissa Crockett, at, uh, the new assistant town manager, who's been really involved in communications from the town and trying to kind of cross-pollinate a little bit and see if we can um, work together more. Great. Thank you. Jackie. Yes, the board continues uh, its negotiations with the bus drivers, and we will be starting negotiations with the support staff. We'll be going to be doing double duty here. And the youngsters weren't here tonight, but I want to remind people that Tuesday the 6th is the senior awards night that starts okay. at 6. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, let me see, we already mentioned 9.45 on the 8th is the senior send-off. And then at, on the 9th, a week from tomorrow at 9.30 at Wentworth, is the planting of the sunflowers by the incoming third graders. It's step-up day for the second graders. And the middle school celebration is at 6 that evening, I believe. Mm -hmm. Then graduation is at 7 o'clock on the 11th, and then on the 19th at 9 is the Wentworth Assembly. Did I miss anything? I think that's all the days of June, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's some other things tucked in there. We do have a very special guest, uh, guest tomorrow at the middle school. I don't know if we're, are we allowed to say that oh, publicly? Yes. Senator Angus King is coming wow. to Doug Bennett's class tomorrow um, to talk with his students, so we're all excited about that as well. Awesome. Yeah. He's a sugar lover. Yep. <laughs> That's going to be great. Um, is the press invited to that event? 
Yes. <laughs> the princess, yes. You're invited, Mike. <laughs> That's a good seats in the front row. That's what that gets you access. <laughs> good job. <laughs> um, did you have any Augusta reports or? No, we didn't have a meeting in May. We've been. Uh, I am on the uh, the legislative committee, and we've been meeting over the phone on legislation and. Uh, it, you, I'm getting mixed, we're getting mixed messages just that you get the communications mm -hmm. from the main school boards and, and they're getting the mixed communications from the legislature and uh, it's really complicated. rather frustrating quite frankly because you hear this and then boom somebody else says no we can't do that so it's uh, it's all up in the air, you know, and the, the budget is supposed to, by law, we have to have a budget by the end of the month, so Lord knows what's going to transpire. I mean, the governor just wants to get rid of everything, everything. Hmm. He doesn't want to pay for any, any administrative costs. He, you know, he thinks we're spending too much on special education. And um, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. Well, we'll await that mystery to unravel itself over the month <laughs> of June. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to give a quick update on the Health, Safety, and Security Task Force team, townwide team, whatever. All the all the letters are. But, um, we met for our last meeting um, for the school year. We kind of follow a school schedule and. Um, we're kind of setting things up for next year. We might be looking for some new members. I know we're hoping to get a representative from the town council to join. Um, we've had one in the past, but um, and also maybe some um, parent engagement on some of the subcommittees. But we're talking about doing some um, regular town-wide presentations about health issues, safety and security that would impact everyone. They're not just school issues, they're community issues. So. Um, look forward to that in the fall as that starts to get going. We're hoping to do at least three. I don't know, we committed to at least three. Um, four meetings. Four meetings, but maybe three of the bigger okay. presentations. Yeah. Um, so if anyone has any interest in joining us, Joanne usually has coffee at those meetings, so <laughs> I'm just saying, we get perks for the early morning meetings. Um, I think that's all I have to report for committees. So that takes us to 11.0, motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1, MRSA 4056D for discussion, discussions concerning a personnel issue not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All in favor? We are in executive 